There is a U.S. boxed warning on carbamazepine stating patients of Asian descent should be screened for the variant HLA-B1502 allele prior to initiating therapy. This genetic variant has been associated with a significantly increased risk of developing Stevens-Johnson syndrome and or toxic epidermal necrolysis. Patients with a positive result should not be started on carbamazepine. So what does this mean? And what are the chances of developing Stevens-Johnson syndrome or toxic epidermal necrolysis? And how do we run this test? HLA-B is a human leukocyte antigen B, which is a cell mark marker for self. And immune cells evaluate this to determine if it is your own cell or foreign body which needs to be destroyed. This is present in all cells except for red blood cells and platelets. Now, HLA-B1502 is a subset of this cell marker which means HLA-B15 subtype 02. Stevens-Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis are severe adverse cutaneous drug reaction, basically similar condition presenting erythematous macules and epidermal necro necrolysis or necrosis. And Stevens-Johnson's syndrome often involve mucous membrane involvement, but lesser surface area in total with lesser detachment of the cutaneous surface. But toxic epidermal necrolysis is more severe condition with involvement of greater than 30% of body surface and full thickness epidermal necrosis. We should be aware of these conditions because of the high mortality. Stephen Johnson syndrome is fat fatal in 5% and it can be as high as 40% in toxic epidermal necrolysis. So how often do we see Stephen Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis. Studies showed 8 per million person year in Singapore and Malaysia and it is slightly higher than the report from Caucasian population which was 0 0.4 to 7.4 per million person year. However, carbamazepine constitutes 25 to 33 percent of all Stevens Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis in the Singapore and Malaysian studies I mentioned, which is significantly higher compared to only 5 to 6 percent in Caucasian population. According to FDA, post marketing adverse events reported to the WHO and carbamazepine manufacturers pointed to a much higher rate of Stevens Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis, about 10 times higher in some Asian countries such as Malaysia, Thailand, Taiwan, and Philippines. These are the cases of severe adverse cutaneous drug reactions per 100,000 patients year exposure based on cumulative estimated report um, rates between 2000 and 2006 by carbamazepine manufacturer. As you can see here in the USA and Euro Europe, you only see two to um, nine cases per 100,000 patients year exposure. However, in Taiwan, Malaysia, Philippines, um, Thailand and India didn't have these numbers, but in Japan, these numbers are significantly higher.
So, how often do we see an individual with HLA-B1502? On the right-hand column, you see the prevalence of HLA-B1502 population. As you can see, it is very low in the USA and Europe, 0% in Caucasian Native American, and only 1-2% to seen in Europe. However, in these Asian countries, it does depend on the subpopulation of subpopulation or the real ethnicity of the individual, but you can see it can go up um, to 15.5, 15.7% uh, in Malay, 27.5% in Th Thailand, and a very small population called um, Ivatan. Ivatan, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, but you can see up to 36%. It is relatively low in Japan and Korea with uh, 02 to 0.4%. But in India, you see in this Kandesh population, uh, you see about 6%. So these are the reasons why Asian patient who would be put on carbamazepine is recommended to be screened for HLA-B1502 prior to starting the medication. Higher chance of developing Stevens-Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis due to higher prevalence of HLA-B1502 um, presenting population and Stevens Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necro necrolysis are um, high in mortality. So how do we screen it? It's a very simple serologic exam. Draw a three millimeter of blood and send it to the lab and check for rapid DNA extraction or PCR to detect HLA-B1502. However, there is one big problem. When I checked how much and how long it'll take to get the result on Mayo Clinic, it says it costs $453 and it takes five days to get the result. Although the risk for severe ad adverse cutaneous drug reaction from using carbamazepine is significantly higher than Caucasian population, it is still an awful lot of investment per Asian patient for a relatively rare adverse reaction. You also cannot start the medication until you get the result of the test. So it seems that time and cost must be improved for this test to be recognized as a standard screening exam before putting Asian patient on carbamazepine. Thank you for listening to the presentation.